let's turn this tiny useless closet into a pantry. Hey everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. This is one of those projects that I've been putting off for a long time, but I'm so glad that I was finally able to do it. I'm hoping that this video gives you tons of tips if you want to organize or DIY your own pantry. I'm gonna be sharing free pantry organization principles for you and so much more. Let's get started. In our home, we have this back entry here and what I did when we moved in was I made this hook wall here on the side. So that's where we put all of our jackets and hooks and honestly, this back door here doesn't even lead to anything yet because we still have to finish a deck out here so it's mostly just a storage area right now that leads to our laundry room really kid friendly with all the hooks then we have this tiny little closet here that I've been using for over seven years for just junk like paint and everything I had a little rod at the top that we really didn't use for anything because we already had the hooks so I finally decided this needs to stop we need to convert this useless little closet into something that our family needs most. We do have a small pantry in our kitchen. You might remember me doing an organization video for that last year, but I thought it would be nice to convert this into an extra pantry for all of that kind of extra overflow storage, bulk goods, that kind of thing. Plus I wanted to configure it so I could turn it back into clothing accessory storage for this back entry if and when we ever need that. I'll be I'm beginning this makeover by removing all of the stuff in this closet and putting it where it should have been in the first place, which is in my work studio. Then I'm removing the rod unit here and sanding all of the holes that it left and filling them up with some spackle. Next, I grabbed some of this shelving material from the Home Depot. I grabbed some that was 12 inches deep and some that was 16 inches deep. I'm going to be using this leftover trim from my brother and sister-in-law's nursery project. I did a really cool trim feature wall. I'll leave a link to that tutorial down in the description box below. I'm trying to use a lot of what I have this year on hand and since I had some of this left, I thought it would be the perfect material to install to hold up my shelves. So essentially like a trim shelf bracket. I'm using my miter saw to cut these to the size that I want. I'm cutting 45 degree angles at the corners so that I can attach these together inside the closet. You guys, if you're going to invest in one tool this year to do some DIYs around your home, I would highly recommend a miter saw. I will leave a link to mine in the description box below. Next, I'm going to install these in the closet to hold up my shelves. I'm using a level to make sure that they're nice and level in here and drawing a line with a pencil. And I'm also using a stud finder to find all of the studs in the walls so that I can attach these brackets right to the studs to make sure that they are nice and stable. To install these into the wall in my closet, I am using a brad nailer, also a fantastic tool. I will link mine in the description box below. So I'm attaching the back trim piece with my brad nailer into the studs and then the two side trim pieces. Now I'm testing to make sure that my shelf sits nice and flat on top and I think it is perfect. Now what I'd recommend when you are installing shelves in a cupboard or a pantry like this is put the items that you think you want to store here and make sure that you're going to leave enough room between the shelves to hold all of your items. In this case, I'm making sure that a large cereal box from Costco is gonna fit in this first shelf, and these little bins that I got from Amazon are gonna fit in the rest of the shelves. So what I did for my pantry was I made the very bottom shelf 24 inches from the ground for things like paper products and bulk items. The next shelf is gonna be 16 inches apart for all those big cereal boxes, and the final shelves are going to be 14 inches apart for my Amazon boxes. I'm also installing some baseboard in the bottom of this closet that was never done. Okay, also the inside of this closet was never painted, so I'm using my favorite white paint right now, which is Bare Whisper White. I love this paint. You might remember I used it for my camper renovation last year, as well as for all my trim in my house. I'm not caulking or filling any of the holes in my brackets since you won't really be able to see those, but you could certainly do that if that makes a big difference for you. What I'm trying to do is just filling in all the holes with nice big globs of paint and going ahead and making sure all of the ends of my trim are painted so that when you open the closet, you're going to see all those finished painted ends. Mm -hmm. 
Another thing that was never done in this corner is I never installed the baseboard here on the corners. So I'm taking some leftover baseboard we have that matches all the rest in our house. Again, using my miter saw to cut it at angles so that it goes around those corners and installing it. I did forgot to film it, but I did tack it all down with my Brad nailer. Now this is gonna feel so good, but I'm finally painting all of the trim around this door and the door itself again in that bare whisper wipe. I love to use either a really good paintbrush or a foam roller to paint doors and trims to give it a nice finish. I'm also painting the inside of the closet in the same whisper white. I'm using a satin finish because I find that's really easy to wipe using that on trim and doors and the interior of my closet. One good tip that my mom gave me several years ago, which I used and I still love, is it's always a good idea to paint all of the interiors of your closets and pantry white or to match the trim in your home. And that way, no matter what color you paint your walls in your home, the interiors of your closets and pantries are always going to match. My husband's making craft dinner as I finish up this pantry project. Next, I thought it would be fun to add a little bit of what looks like texture in the back of this pantry. I found this contact paper on Amazon and I loved the barn wood effect. Since I have a lot of sort of rustic barn wood look in my home already, I thought it would be neat to match it with this contact paper. This is really easy to use. What I do is I just take the backing off the first little bit of the paper, apply it to the top of where I want it to be, and then gently pull the backing down as I smooth the contact paper onto the wall. When I need to measure a piece of the contact paper, I just put it right up on my wall and make little clips with scissors and then cut it. This one was really simple to match up. I think it looks really pretty and I use it just to line the back of this pantry. This is a really fun way to add a little bit of pattern or texture or color to the backs of your pantries for just a fun surprise when you open it up. What I recommend is cutting it a little bit larger than you need, and then you can go ahead and use a utility knife to trim off those end pieces. I actually was a bit lazy here and didn't do it because I knew my shelves were going to cover it up, but it's really easy just to use a utility knife to trim it off. The cool thing about this contact paper is it's very easy to remove. You can just lift it off just like this and take it off the wall without any damage as long as the paint underneath is completely cured. So this could be a really good solution if you are renting and want to add some color to your space. Now I'm putting in all the shelving. I'm actually not tacking it down at all. I'm just resting it on top just in case I ever want to move it around or get deeper shelves or shallower shelves or whatever I need to do here. I really love how this looks with that back contact paper. Next I'm grabbing this closet mate organizer. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. I thought this would be a good solution to add even more storage to this pantry. I'm going to be installing this on the inside of the door because my shelves aren't that deep inside, which I did because I have a hard time kind of reaching in for stuff. I wanted to add more shelves on the door that would fit nicely inside the closet. I thought this piece could be a really good solution for things like cans and boxes and just the extra little items that I didn't want to put in the interior shelves. I'm attaching it right to the door with some screws, making sure that I have screws in the top, middle and bottom so that when I open and close the door, this system isn't swinging up and down. I found this really easy to install. I would definitely recommend it. It seems really sturdy and you can move the shelves around wherever you want. This door also never had a knob, so I'm getting what's called a dummy knob. It actually doesn't even work because there is no latch in this door. It's just kind of a fake knob that you use to open and close a closet. And I love how that finishing touch looks. 
Okay, lots of you guys in my original pantry video last year asked me where I keep all my canned goods. And here's where I have them, but I just didn't think that was working for me and I wanted to move them to this new closet. Also, this is totally disgusting. I'm really sorry to gross you guys out by how dirty this is. So I took all of the cans. I also had some small appliances in here and gave it a really good clean and it felt so amazing to start the new year off like this. I decided I'm gonna put all of my small appliances down in this corner cupboard here in the kitchen, my blender, the things I actually use, like my Instant Pot and my waffle maker. All the rest of my small appliances that I don't use, like my juicer, I'm going to be donating. Now I'm putting all of the cans from that cupboard inside this new pantry, and I really liked how they fit in this door system. I get so caught up in the middle. So I'm putting all the ones that we use often here and then keeping some in the bulk boxes like my Costco boxes and I'll show you where I put those. Next I'm printing out these pantry labels that I made. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description box below if you want to download these and print them too. You could use a Cricut machine to print out vinyl labels but I thought I would make these just because I want them to be accessible for everybody. If you have a printer or if you can send them to a print shop in your area you can print these and cut them. I have a lot of different designs, so I'll make sure to link that whole free printable download in the description box below. I'm trying to keep this pantry as mostly canned goods, snacks, and bulk items that I can't fit in our main pantry. So I'm attaching the labels that I made to these Amazon bins, putting the things inside, and I made sure that two of these side by side could fit into one shelf in this pantry. That's another thing that I would recommend if you're doing any sort of pantry makeover. When you're shopping for bins and baskets, just triple check the measurements and make sure that they fit nicely into your space. My space was just over 22 inches wide, so I was able to fit two of these 11 inch boxes side by side. I also had some of these IKEA baskets left on hand from a previous project, so I'm placing some bulk items in there as well. So here's a reminder of what this useless closet looked like before, so messy. And here is how this new pantry looks. I'm so happy that I finally went ahead and did this makeover, it's been a long time coming. I feel like our family needs all the storage we can get, especially when we're trying to keep sort of an emergency supply of things on hand if any of us is sick and we need to quarantine for a couple of weeks. I love that we have all our canned goods accessible here on the door and we have all of our snacks and our bulk items that we can't fit into our main pantry here as well. And if we ever need to convert this back into storage for our back door when we get that going, I think this could work really well for winter accessories, for cleaning supplies or anything like that. So here's a look at our original pantry here. So I have mostly kind of my baking and cooking things here now. I did change the snacks area to more baking supplies. And here's how the new appliance area looks. I'm so glad I took the cans out and placed them in this new pantry area. This was such a fun DIY and I definitely recommend adding shelves to any sort of closet you have like this just to make it a lot more functional and useful for your family. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this video helpful today. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this pantry conversion and the organization. I would love to know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna put some more videos that I hope you will enjoy next right up here.